Hey, what's good with you? BQ here. Once again, let's talk Global Force Wrestling and the uh, departures and rumored departures from the company right now. So do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. I host the King of the Mound podcast each week covering Global Force Impact Wrestling in a very positive light. So uh, check out the podcast, hit subscribe. Let's get it on and popping. So first name. All right, there's, so there's a... Uh, Four, possibly five names that have, I don't even want to say surface because usually when a company doesn't come to terms with someone or releases someone or someone moves on, it's very under the radar unless it's something that the dirt sheets want to put out there. So the first one, Matt Morgan, when he uh, had come back, and now I'm realizing when Matt Morgan came back, you know, it was, it was more of a buzz thing. It was more, you know, Jeff Jarrett wanted to bring a few old guys for that set of tapings and you know for for buzz or what have you and he you know he came to be a member of that that a uh, tag team when it was a uh, four on four team jb against team goat and at the time that it happened and the time some of these other names had come back i had made a comment you know that that impact was bringing back heavyweight wrestling and uh it was something that I don't know that there's necessarily a market for, but the other companies aren't really focusing on heavyweight wrestling. And the heavyweights usually, you know, I'll use like the Big Show, for instance. I mean, it's like he plays that monster role, but eventually he just loses a whole ton to people a fraction of his size. And that, that seems to kind of be what the direction of heavyweight wrestling has been going and they're not the same in-ring workers and, you know, it's it's we're past the days of being a body guy and just going in there and doing some power moves. So Matt Morgan, not to, to no su- surprise, you know, looked like he was probably just there on a per date deal for that set of tapings. And, you know, let's be real. He doesn't have a whole heck of a lot left in the tank. And, uh, you know, it, it was a buzz thing. Like I said, he they were uh, focusing on bringing guys who are part of a podcast of a highly viewed highly listened to podcast and i know he does the uh, wrestle inc one i believe and they usually cover wwe uh along with other items but you know uh topics and he's never been negative about the company but you know let's face it he had a couple matches nothing uh you know nothing to write home about he had a match with magnus that was was a little boring not super well received so, understood, understandable. He did a couple one-night onlys, it's whatever. Magnus, you know, speaking of him, he was the other one. Kind of surprised me, kind of shocked me. But from what I'm reading, from what I'm understanding, he was he was pretty much just there to drop the title. They did offer him a long-term deal, which he, he turned down. So, I would imagine a guy, you know, he's kind of been there, done that with the company. And he held the uh, GFW title for so long. I think he kind of has a sight sets on NXT. I, I don't know that you know they they necessarily have interest in him. I heard that they did, but it would make sense. His wife is with the company, so in all honesty, his return really flamed out. It, it he he did the if you guys remember, <laughs> they, they did it on YouTube after the show, like it was this giant reveal as the fourth member of Team JB when he came down. And he uh, had the suit on and he was bringing the championship belt, you know. So it was kind of cool. And it's like, oh, Magnus, he's going to be great for the world title scene. But it, it flamed out so quickly. I mean, he they kind of had him doing this heel turn thing where he, he said, I have a golden ticket. I want a title shot. And then, you know, Karen Jarrow, it's like, that's not a golden ticket. Like, I, I didn't wasn't understanding that because that was her champion. It was her Global Force champion. So why, why all of a sudden are you like trying to hold this guy back? So I think that hurt him. It was it was a it was a very quick little heel turn. Again, he had that match with Matt Morgan that wasn't super impressive, and then he had the match with El Patron, which was decent. But he I mean he was fed to El Patron, and he just uh, you know it never felt he never bounced back from that. Now, I don't think he had a match after that, but it wasn't you know. It was like we were over Magnus very quickly. I don't think he really delivered. His heart didn't really seem to be in it. And it's unfortunate for the sake of the Global Force title that, you know, he held it that long. I know he didn't defend it a whole lot, but it was like he just came to the company and was fed to someone and dropped it. And then that was it. 
you know, I think they, come to think of it, I know they put him in that triple threat with EC3 and Storm, so it was almost like they were going to kind of do something with him and, and, you know, again, flamed out. Speaking of Global Force Champion, this one is, you know, Christina Von Eri. We don't know right now with her. I did ask Adam Thornstow on Twitter if he she will be a part of them when they're on TV, and he said, I don't, I said, I hope so. So, I don't really know what's going on with her. She wrestled the two matches, one with Ava Story, which was not good, and then the match with Sienna, which really wasn't that great either. But she she didn't look good. She They made her look extremely weak. I mean, she dropped that title like nothing to Sienna and then never had any interest in getting it back. So that didn't go so well. And then, uh, so, so we got two more. Let's see. Um, I'm not going off notes here, so apologize. Madison Rain was another. I know she worked on the indie scene under her... Uh, her previous indie name, which is understandable because if her contract ran out, then she can't really be Madison Rain. But I wouldn't think that this is a, a long-term thing or a big deal. I know she's a mother, and she has been saying she does a lot backstage, uh, works creatively with the with the company, was doing the YouTube shows with with Josh, which I think was a really the with this ring. I think it was a really good show, and I thought she showed a lot of personality uh, that kind of offset his his uh, demeanor and everything. So I would imagine she's going to be back in some capacity. Um, probably not as an agent if Gail Kim's going to fill that role, but I think she'll be back in some kind of creative capacity or something like that. You know, maybe there was a fallout. I don't know. I, I highly doubt it if Josh is with the company and he's a pretty valued member of the company. So uh, we'll see what happens with Madison Rain. I, th I think we're going to hear her name again because she's too big of a cog in the company and a, a mainstay to just, you know, disappear out of nowhere and then the uh the last one was brandy Rhodes, and this is the no shock of me i don't know why they had her image on the website up for so long it's, it was very clear to me that she was done with the company i mean there was a couple people that tweeted at her about the about her husband you know if he's going to be back on impact and she was actually kind of rude and uh i think what you know this was very similar to the aaron rex thing where i think the company just erased a mistake you know the uh, which I'm, I hate saying Aaron Rex was a mistake because I thought he had a lot of promise and initially, but with Brandy, the, you know, there the new management came in and kind of erased some Dixie Carter mistakes where there she was trying to bring in WWE guys who didn't move the needle, and you know when she came to the company she tried to say oh I'm this badass athlete and everything but she moved very awkwardly in the ring, she uh, she had that submission finisher which was like water I mean it was it was weak. And she just she just wasn't good, you know. Her mic skills were pretty good, um, attractive girl, but I just don't think it worked. I was excited when she came aboard, but it just it just didn't work. And you know, the, I think the crowd is going to turn on her very quickly because she didn't lose any matches. You know, as bad as she, well, no, she lost to Santana Garrett on one night only, I believe. But you know, as far as on the Impact show, she wasn't losing, and. Uh, you know, she kind of won her feuds fairly quickly with Maria and, and all them. So, you know, no big loss. Uh, Christina Von Eri is, is the one that I hope uh, pops up again. And w as well with Madison Rain, but I also know her in-ring days are probably probably numbered. However, I think she could, you know, play a pretty good uh, heel champion role for a little while. You know, after Sienna drops it or whatever. But, you know, so what do you guys think about... The departures, rumored departures, who do you kind of hope, you know, sticks around, uh, you know, is it no no big loss, whatever. And I kind of want to know what you guys thought about Brandy Rose and her time there. So that is it for me today. Hit subscribe, please. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.